Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about um, work we have done and improving the accuracy of a backcast criteria model for estimation of soil moisture using polarimetric radar SAT2 data. I will start with an introduction to measurement and estimation of soil moisture. Then I will briefly talk about the method usually used for estimation of soil moisture using polarimetric SAR. And more specifically about the new algorithm we have used for improving the accuracy of estimation of soil moisture. The next section will be about our the, the data we have used in our experiments and the study area. Uh, after that, I will talk about the results of our experiment, experiments and we mention some points as conclusions. So, soil moisture is defined as the ratio of the amount of water in soil to, to the uh, total amount of soil. It's an important parameter in many fields but its me measurement is difficult. It has been traditionally measured using uh, uh, time-consuming field work. So remote sensing with its unique data gathering specifications seems promising for this purpose. Because it is cost-effective, cost it is fast. We can have regular revisions in case we are interested in uh, changes in soil moisture. And the images in remote sensing cover a wide area. Among the different sensors used in remote sensing for estimation of soil moisture, uh, microwave sensors have got more attention because they are more sensitive to uh, soil moisture. When we look at larger scales like field scale, which was a scale of interest in our study, um, SAR is the one that we can use because of its high spatial resolution. So if we consider the back scattering coefficient of a SAR system as observation. This back scattering coefficient is a function of dielectric properties of soil. And uh, I mean, not only soil, but any object illuminated by, illuminated by SAR. And also, the back scattering coefficient is a function of the roughness of the surface of the object. So in case of polarimetric SAR observations, we can have back the back scattering coefficient in different channels corresponding to different polarizations. For a monostatic polarimetric SAR like uh, radar SAT2, we may have back scattering coefficient in HH, VH, and VV channels. These channels, uh, or a subset of them, are used for estimation of near surface soil moisture. For this purpose, usually a mathematical model is used, which can be empirical, physical, or semi-empirical. For this study, we have used a physical model called integral equation model, which receives the dielectric constant of soil and its surface roughness, and yields the back coefficient. So if we want to estimate the dielectric constant and surface roughness of soil, we have to use a, an inversion technique to get uh, the, the dielectric constant and surface roughness. As soon as we have the dielectric constant of soil, we can convert that to uh, uh, volumetric soil moisture value using a dielectric mixing model. These are a class of uh, uh, models. And for this study, we have used the uh, top model, which is simply a third order polynomial and doesn't need any information about soil texture. So the IEM and other backscattering models used for estimation of soil moisture, their output contain error like any model used for describing some natural phenomenon. For improving the performance of these models, different methods have been proposed such as direct manipulation of the model for removing some approximations and simplifications, filtering the data, decomposing the signal before the data is fed into the model, or applying some constraints like temporal constraints, spatial constraints during the inversion, of, during the inversion process. Our approach is different from these in that we work on the soil moisture values after it has been estimated by um, the model, the IEM. 
For this purpose, we use a, a tool for analyzing the spatial variability of soil moisture images that come from the IEM. This is called multi-factor analysis, and which is a multi-resolution analysis. Uh, no statistical assumption about the distribution of the soil moisture values are uh, done here, and it has already been used for soil moisture, not in the context of estimation of soil moisture, but for downscaling soil moisture values. I can't go through the details of multi-factor analysis. There's quite a bit of math involved in this, but what I can say is that we create a, we create a mean um, image pyramid from our soil moisture images. Uh, it has different levels, and from top to bottom, uh, we get less details at each level. For each level, we calculate the uh, moments of different orders for each level. And then these moments are connected to each other through a multifractal model called strain model, which has, as I said, already been used for uh, downscaling uh, soil moisture images. It has two parameters, beta and C, which can be calculated using optimization by fitting the model to our soil moisture images. These two parameters uh, have been estimated using uh, optimization for all, the, for all our, uh, our field sites in our study area. Our study area is uh, located in Carman, about 50 kilometers southwest of Winnipeg. Uh, it's an agricultural area, but the, uh, but the uh, soil moisture observations, soil moisture measurements, I mean, uh, have been carried out in bare fields in order to avoid the effect of vegetation and estimation of soil moisture. We had three uh, radar sat to images acquired on April 22nd, May 9th, and May 16th, 2008. They were singularly complex images acquired on fine quadratization mode, and the ground measurements were done by Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. This picture shows the first image, image of April 22nd, and the yellow triangles show the location of ground measurement sites. Ground measurements uh, for each side were done in a grid of four by four measurement points. And for each point, we had four measurements. So we had 64 measurements for each side. This picture shows the radar set two pixels grid uh, on uh, the grid of ground measurements. So we calculated beta and C parameters from strain model for each side. And as it has been already observed, uh, we observed that the parameter beta is fairly constant over the region. So it is, as it is suggested in the literature by the original limiters of the strain model, beta was set to a fixed value, and C parameters were calculated again. It was observed that parameter C is uh, strongly correlated with the value of soil moisture residual and for each site. And by residual, I mean the difference between the average value of soil moisture measured on the ground and the average value of soil moisture estimated by the IEM. Linear calibration model is proposed, which uh, can Im improve the agreement between ground measurements of soil moisture and the outputs from IEM. It has two parameters, A and B, which can be estimated using a reference image and concrete ground measurements. And then these parameters may be used for other images for improving the accuracy of estimation of soil moisture by the IEM. This table shows the results of applying our calibration model on outputs of IEM. These, this column is the results of uh, the IEM before calibration, calibration, and this one is after calibration. So as, as it is seen in the table, the calibration model always improves the correlation coefficient 
at least by at least 25 percent. Um, most of the time it improves the RMSE measure. There's an exception here for the case when we use the image on Epoch 2, the second image as a reference image, and then we calibrate the values of, values of soil moisture coming out of the IEM for image 1. In this case, the calibration method degrades the results. This cannot be because of the temporal difference between images because we can see in the table that when we use the first image as the reference image and calculate the parameters of the calibration model and then use it for the third image, the results are improved. So the degradation that we observe can be, can be because of um, the difference in the incidence angle that we have for this second image, uh, it, it, I think it is 35 degrees, the instance angle, and for these two we have 31 for the first and third image. So as a conclusion, I can say that the multifactor analysis may be used for improving the uh, estimation of soil moisture by the IEM by establishing a robust calibration model. However, a more complex model may be needed for this purpose than the simple linear model that we have used. Also, as the uh, speckle filtering affects the spatial variability of the soil moisture coming from the IEM, um, the effect of speckle filtering and also the effect of incidence angle needs to be more investigated.